Eddie likes a challenge. I think Eddie what? just likes being tormented. Hey, what? Oh, 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 Why do I like a challenge? Why do I like torment? I don't like neither of those. <laughs> well, no, don't give me dirty laughs. I don't like dirty laughs like that. The only one that can do dirty laughs is me. That's that's the rule well, of this podcast. Ed talks about with Charlotte and Chapman. No, no. I think. Can you hear that van? No, no. I think it's about once a podcast. I try and hijack it off you. Yes, you do. You absolutely bloody well do. Hello everybody, this is the Ed Talk About Podcast, our weekly podcast talking about cosplay, Comic-Con and everything else. I'm your host Eddie. This week we are talking about favourite cosplay photos, which I'm going to be discussing with other photographers. Who knew? Uh, joining us on the podcast is Charlotte from Warwatch Photography. No, Charlotte Warwatch Photography. I do apologise for that, Charlotte. Do not hurt me. Please hire her. And also we've got <laughs> Ch- <laughs> one, one per podcast and um, Chapman from LPC Photography. Welcome to you both. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you. Not a problem, not a problem. Now, full disclosure right now, I'm recording this podcast, we're recording this podcast on probably the hottest day of the year. Um, I don't know if it's been mentioned in the, the news recently, I, you might have heard about it, so just thought I'd let you know. Now, if you could hear a fan in the background from any of us, we do apologise, but seriously, we need it on, so it, uh, you'll have to su- sit and suffer and listen to this fan playing in the background, so... Um, so hopefully, if you're listening to this while you're sleeping, at least hopefully that hum noise, you'll go, oh, so good to sleep, you type of thing. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, Charlotte, how are you? How's the last seven days for you? Um, They've been good, productive. I've been editing. I've been hiding inside to try and avoid the heat. You know, standard stuff. But um, yeah, I'm just trying to get organized, really, for the rest of the year. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, Chapman, what about you? You've actually just come back from somewhere. Yeah, I literally just flew back from Amsterdam TwitchCon, and I'm dying right now. I feel like I'm in Super Mario Brothers Three. If you played it, there's that world where the sun literally chases you, trying to kill oh, you. Yeah, yeah, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the meme of that. Yeah. Um, does actually ask, does pose the question: Why are you on this podcast if you're that tired already? Because I like to torture myself. Fair enough. Look, at least I'm not the one doing it. Now, um, I always do this for those who are first time joining us for the podcast. So, Chapman, how do we how do we meet each other? I can't. Again, I can't. You're one of the few people. No, I say few people. You're one of the many people. I can't remember how we first met, but I think it was, I felt like it was London film. One of the London film comic cons in the early days. No, actually, it was the the con we all blacklist. We, we met by the oh. staircase, remember? We were both uh, wanting to shoot a same cosplayer. Oh, right. Um, oh, uh, Alien Queen, was it? Oh, okay then. Yeah, and then uh, we were chatting because a certain loud photographer wouldn't stop taking photos. No, that's me. I'm the loud photographer. Wait, that's me? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god in the previous life we all met each other oh my no. god oh dear yeah. lord um oh no okay that's i can remember i didn't realize yes yeah, so uh, the less said about that uh, the better on all accounts um okay that's cool all right no that's i hmm yeah i don't know how i feel about that, that mm, oh <laughs> real real <laughs> bad there yeah. how uh, many years ago was that oh at least four I would say, no, about eight, eight or nine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, about eight or nine, I think. Oh, God. Maybe. I feel, feel sorry for you, Chapman, that you've known me that long. Eh, I need someone to torture. What? <laughs> oh. is, it be- this. is it because you- I keep calling you VHS photography? No, it's because everyone keeps thinking I'm you. <laughs> No, seriously, genuinely. No, I know, it's, I know. People come to me and say, oh, are you um, uh, Papercube? I went, No! Because you're both so talented. Yes, we're yeah. both so talented. Yes, thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Anytime. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, I think it's because we're both Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Shh! Don't tell people that we're Chinese. <laughs> I think some people don't know that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I half get it why, but also I don't get it. But uh, let's not go down that road. 
I, I get it with all other female photographers. It's fine. Fair enough. All well, <laughs> redhead photographers, I'm assuming. Oh, Jesus, especially well, that, yeah. Did you did you hear a news report? There was a cinema, I don't know where it was, but the cinema was listening. Yeah, I was going to go later, but then my boyfriend came over. <laughs> Genuinely, I was, I mean, it was, it was, this, it's right next to where my, like, gym is. So I was going to mm. go gym, workout session, and then, mm. you know, shower, cinema for free, yeah. and then come back. Why not? Why not? Best oh. idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Fair enough. And um, Charlotte's not going to be embarrassed when I say this, but uh, um, how was your dinner? How was, you know, did you tuck in quite nice? Good chicken? It's actually really nice chicken. I'm like finishing it right now. <laughs> and me, like my, it's like lemon and herby chicken on rice right. with peppers and mushroom and broccoli. Mm. My boyfriend brought it up and he brought me a little egg cup with salt in it because he is well trained. Wow. And human. And yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. So carry on talking for like, I need like a minute, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus. I'm tell. joking. No. I hope though. so. I hope so. You know, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I follow a strict format about these podcasts. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, wow. sorry, Eddie, one, one minute. Wow. Wow. Cool, I'm ready. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you're ready. I'm glad you're ready. Okay, all right. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, I better explain this new this new format of my podcast. This will probably fail. I'll never do it again. But uh, I had an idea where I would get photographers together and talk about some of their favorite photos they've taken in recent in recent time. I would say recent time, I I assume since pandemic was, you know, was, um, no, lockdown was relaxed and all that. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, and I want to know how people come to like either take the certain photo, why they pick this photo as their favorite or, um, how is it something to do with the editing process or is there a nice memory behind it? I don't know. Things like that. So, um, you know, and then what we're going to do is, uh, We've got our own little chat window. We're going to send these photos now. Don't panic. Don't worry. I'm not stupid that this is an audio podcast. You will get to see it. What I'm going to do is I will put these photos up right now on the website. So if you go to foodandcosplay.org slash podcast 109, so that's 109, that will get you to the podcast page, which also has the images of the photos we're going to talk about. Now, I don't know how many images we're going to talk about, but we've all picked a, you know, a small selection of photos, and we'll see how many we can get through and chat about it. So um, since this is my idea, I better go first. So mm, which one do I go for? Do you know what? I'm going to go with this one here. Right. So I'm going to send this in now. Eddie's chosen a audio medium to do a visual podcast. <laughs> 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 I thought I look in my head this worked okay but no, it, I mean it does work the best thing though is while we wait for it to load on our internet you've said this one here and we're in the same position as the audience of we still don't know which one yeah I know exactly so I've just sent it into a chat so um oh damn oh thank you oh okay that's, that's why I wanted to hear straight away so I um, love that first picture is uh cosplayer is Ember Wolf uh, she's dressed as Squirrel Girl in her own take on it, so she, you could tell instantly it's Squirrel Girl, absolutely. But uh, I, I feel like it's a bit of a oh, what's the word? Grittier version. Uh, got a bit of you know that spunk to her, and I'll describe the picture as best as possible. Uh, she's so the location is outside with a bit of greenery, but she's on some rocks. She's crouched down, fairly like a spider going pose hand out to the side, you know, what the other hand for balance, but the posh is upright. I love the, you know, the colors in it and things like that. So I think this was done at Comic-Con. This was done at uh, Megacon Live uh, Birmingham. The first one that Megacon Live has ever done. And I like this photo a lot because one, this was done in a location which, right, I know... <laughs> Okay, I know a lot of people are going to have a go at me for this, or I've, I've smoked about this so many times. I don't understand why a lot of photographers hang around in one spot to take fo photos. And I, you've got this huge venue, and yet everyone just goes, ah, I'm just going to park myself in one spot, and this will be it. And my guy, come on, not all photos can be done in one guy. Not, not this location can fit all cosplays. Well, in my eyes, I don't think. So 
I was proving a point to myself, and this is not a dig at any other photographers out there, but I wanted to do a point, you know, I have a point to myself that says, you can take photos anywhere and everywhere with a, with a cosplayer that will, you know, which you make it fit to the cosplayer. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And all right, the place which I think every photographer was, was uh, in the forest area next to the lake. So I could have done this photo at the forest area, but I chose not to. Um, it's a very nice, clean photo. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't have people in the background and things like that. So this was actually situated. So again, just to describe the area of the, of, of, uh, at the Birmingham NEC, there's a, uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, experience day type of thing. It's called the Bear Grills experience. Like you can go wall climb, yeah, wall climbing, uh, skydiving. I don't know skydiving, but things like that. You, you know, it's that type of urbanness. So there's some rocks nearby. We sort of, you know, next to a grassy, I was going to say grassy knoll. God, I hope JFK is not nearby. And I like this photo a lot because I felt like. There's a, such a nice combination of using the right lens, getting the light, the lighting correct. Everyone knows I love my colors in photos, and I just love how the brown, the orange, and the green really like, it, you know, it kind of like works together so well. You know the character straight away. I love that Ember Wolf is like looking to the distance, see, you know, maybe possibly seeking, seeking danger and things like that. So, yeah, I, I like this photo. So, um, I'll start with I'll start with Chapman, and oh no, actually no, I'll start with Charlotte because <laughs> I think I heard the first wow from Charlotte. So I was going to say, why did you went wow straight away? What was the, what about this photo? You went whoa wow. So the lighting on it is absolutely incredible. So I shoot quite underexposed, and this is what I want to be able to do. This is like the thing I think I'm missing from what I do. So it's bright but it still has the depth of color and just like you were saying the the back is a creamy bokeh green and the orange just goes so beautifully with it and her mm. skin tone is glowing but everything like perfectly color matches and it's so smooth and yet so crisp and just like the pose is perfect the crop is great it's a square crop which is unusual oh, yes. i'm gonna say that Mm. I've never seen a square crop like that where I've gone, that really works, but it does. And like, it's just really pleasing to look at. Right. So the way, okay. So I have a thing about negative space. I fucking hate it. <laughs> I, I can't deal with negative space. So I've got a friend who I speak to every so often and she sends me photos and she loves negative space. And I do look and I go, oh, wow, that does sometimes work and sometimes does, doesn't work for me. But she loves it. And I'm going, I can't deal with that. And I can't, and I'm trying to incorporate that into my work. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. So when I looked at this photo originally, obviously it's a four. Is it four by three? I can never remember the ratio. And, and I, I, square. Oh no, 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 man! You know when you normally take a picture, it's a four oh, by sorry, three. Sorry, yes. Yeah, but yeah, the, this is done in a square because I felt like I, I want a real nice tight crop so that nothing really distracts you around the picture, and you know, unless it needs it, unless you need that distraction and things like that. Um, you'll be happy to know, Charlotte, that. This is a photo that I, I do my usual. I do my skin smoothening, contouring. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's fine. No, I haven't done anything else more than that. I haven't done any... I don't think I've done any, like, manipulation, like, tucking any body parts in. I, I think, don't think you could have done with where the tail is. Not Maybe really, no. But, I, you know, I, I, if I do, if I did, I would take really special attention where when the fur moves and things like that, that I try to move the fur back. To mm. where it was whereas the body part stays where i want it to go if that makes sense so yeah uh any, any other uh points you want to like either ask me why i've done it this way or or, or anything else you've noticed about it I just, I, you know when you look at something you're trying really hard to work out what it is mm. i think it's because if i would taken so it's, it's along a wall yes and there's a really nice like larger rock in the foreground and mm. it is blocking off part of her feet but it's not an issue at all and no. I think what I like about this picture is if I was shooting it, I would have gone too high or too low. And I know that. Yeah. But you've got a really nice middle ground of your, she still looks powerful, even though you're slightly below her, but you're slightly above the wall. Mm. So you've got a really like flat, it, it just really works. Honestly, I yeah. like it a lot. I, there's a lot so there's things right so another thing about my photographer i've recently no, uh, noticed is that i like to take photos at eye level where possible I, tr I i know i do photos from above and below that's fine but if i can at 
where I can, you know, where I can possibly is to shoot at eye level so that it, in my eyes, it's not distorted in, in, in perspective, if that makes sense. Yeah, I like it. I'm interested to hear what Chapman has to say. I was going to, I was going to invite Chapman along now. So yeah. uh, uh, Chapman, anything you want to like inqu- inquire about this photo? So I really love the photo. Uh, firstly, I really love the contrast. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the two conflicting colors, the green and the orange, because mm. if you look in a color spectrum, they're opposing colors. So it makes each other stand out even more. Mm. And it just, it's so sharp. So when I look at it, I'm immediately drawn to her eyes. I'm like, I'm curious to what she's seeing. A lot of the times, like for me, I like to do storytelling in my photos. And this is one of the key points. It's telling a story. You're curious. That's why I'm constantly looking through, trying to look more into the photo, seeing what's going on. What's I'm curious about everything. Like the framing is perfect. The way you've angled it at eye level, it just gives you that sense of you're in the immediate danger with her as well. Because oh, it, yeah. where you are now, it could be maybe you're on a high place. Maybe you're not on a high place. We don't know that. But because we're eye level, we feel the immediate danger that they're in as well. Mm. And the way the way that it's layered, it looks really nice. Her eyes are very sharp. You get slight blurring towards the back of the tail, but everything else is really in focus. Mm. And I, I really love just how it's laid out, especially kind of like how the shape of the photo is in terms of the subject in the photo. It's nice and it's like very triangular and it just redirects you constantly with all these lines from these rocks, the tree, everything. It's really nice and mm. really cool. Honestly, guys, thank you very much. Okay, I, I probably have, I've only just realised how much this is going to be self-congratulative type of podcast of this, but obviously we will welcome like constructive criticism, but hopefully we'll find a nice middle ground behind it. But just to say, Chapman, like that photo, that blurriness and all that, and I know Charlotte mentioned it as well, just to say, this is probably used, I used my uh, 200mm uh, lens, my t- uh, telephoto uh, lens, Put up so it's seventy to two hundred. Whacked it probably onto two hundred and got us as as far away as possible to get that framed correctly. And I just yeah, I just love that buttery smooth bokeh in the background. I'm mm, like that. Um, I probably forgot about the tail. So I just I, I purposely make sure that that you can tell what the character is, who the character is. Yes, it's a big tail, but you can still probably cover it with the body enough to go, oh, who is this character? So I always make sure that key aspects of the character you can see such as squirrel girl you need to see the tail so it's things like that that i make sure that i angle myself that that the tail is seen and i always want to make sure that things like trees are not coming out of people's heads and things like that so yeah that's the type of thing that i uh i look out for when i'm you know at least taking the photo at the time and when it came to editing it oh my god i was so buzzing how how much i love to edit this photo like i said i just Mm, the colours and all that, and I obviously I cranked up the orange in the hair. Um, I think I also played around with the colours in the in the in the brown jacket and and the bodysuit. So yeah, it, it just ah oh, um, yeah. So I just I, I I'm glad you like the photo. I mean, if there's something that you would change, and I'm worried about how this is going to turn out, uh, what would you change about this photo? And I'll start with Charlotte. Now this is what I was thinking about the tree. There's a tree in the background. Yeah. Um, this is where like the rules of photography are made to be broken things come in because often you're taught like don't have a tree directly behind your subject because it cuts them in half yeah but actually if you remove the tree from the background of this i think i would dislike it because it'd be really cliche and like clear cosplay plain background yeah. but having that tree there that um like shows the depth but also works with the character has made me love it i think if that tree wasn't there i wouldn't like it as much Oh, okay. and it is a really weird one but i it's just it's one of those moments where you're like this is why you don't always listen to you know quote unquote the correct way of doing stuff <laughs> that perfectly and it like outlines her gives her the hair light around the tail and stuff mm. it like defines her I, I really like it a lot okay well thank you very much charlotte chapman any, would, is there anything about this way you would change if you were handling this photo uh, so to add on i really love the tree it also gives like a sense of scale but one slight thing that's distracting me. Like sure. On the top right side, you see that black beam there? Yeah. In the middle of that black beam is a bright dot. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that, if that bright dot was removed, that would be fine with a black beam. Like, you could remove the black beam or you could just remove that dot. Because if I, as I'm constantly scanning that photo, 
that little dot there is kind of slightly distracting. Yeah. But apart from that, everything's perfect. Oh, thank you so much. Um, no, do you know what? I didn't even notice that black bean. As, as soon as you mentioned it, and I went, oh, God. Yeah, I should have got that in post now, but it's too late. Not saying it's too late. I could also go back and change it again. But do you know what? I was happy at the time then. I'm happy now. So, uh, yeah. So I, I hope that gives people at home listening a, a sense of why how we edit these photos and the process we go through. And... Is this such a strong start? What, are you yeah. joking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I know, I know. Probably should have done a, a thing is... Okay, so when I when I set up this podcast with my guests, I said, oh, come up with like uh, like two or three photos that we can go for. Hopefully, we'll go for at least two, maybe three max. I got my choices down to five. So I don't know what I'm going to do next. So I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck. So We should do a quick fire round at the end, I think, to get the rest of them now. <laughs> Oh God, I hope not. Um, uh, since Charlotte, you're talking, let's you send your pictures into the, into the chat, oh, and because uh, okay. uh, I think we've talked about my photo enough, and I've had enough plaudits from me. So yeah. So I think I'm going to follow suit. And I'm going to start with my current favorite con picture. Right. But as Eddie and Chapman have had to hear, I've had a lot of like, uh, is this my favorite? <laughs> so I've sent that, and I'm sending the two that I did okay. with it as like a shoot content I, do you know what i knew this was this one was probably going to come up i'll but i'll let okay. you describe it right so the photo i've sent and i will explain why i almost have second thoughts but i don't um it's i've got thor and the mighty thor um this was shot at mcm comic con in 2022 so uh may sorry uh before the film came out uh it's two good friends of mine scott and bella pritchard um they are in the new movie outfits again before it came out we went down to the car park where not in the full car park because i don't shoot with lights so this is all naturally lit which is partially i'm really really proud of it and i have edited in all of the lightning hand painted it uh hand painted the lightning in uh we've got the bifrost which part of it is hand painted on the floor and just for me the, am I meant to say why I like it first or not? It's up to you. You, you. This is your little section. You go where you want to go. Okay. So I think, it, is it the perfect way I could have done the shot? No. Which is the only hesitation I've got because there's always that bit which is like, could have been just a tiny bit more. However, having now seen the film and there are two accompanying shots of just the Mike Bella as the Mighty Thor with this photo. Um, having now seen the film, I've smashed out part. The lightning looks perfect. The I'm so proud. I made my own brush and I spent about two hours just looking at pictures of lightning and stuff to basically like learn how lightning moves and so I could paint it on more accurately. Um, everything's glowing. The Bifrost symbol on the floor is accurate and they, they did have that in the movie and they did land together in it. So I was proud of that. Um, the only thing that throws it off for me a tiny bit is the glow from the Bifrost, which is accurate, but still isn't perfect for me but I'm just so proud of the lightning and the cosplayers pose and it's like a proper power pose and the fact that it ended up being so perfect in hindsight even though it was taken before I'm like beyond proud of myself for so this is definitely up there as like best one of the best SFX photos I've ever done and one of the most complex edits from a recent con again i don't want this podcast to sound like we're just all self patting on ourselves on the back you know and then patting each other's off on the back going, oh well done this is such a great photo but genuinely this is a lovely photo i love it i i'm not a guy that does sfx type of edits and um <laughs> when we get to my photos again we'll uh, we'll be discussing that a little bit further um but yeah it's just i i do love this photo a lot i love the pose i love that um bella's looking at the camera and scott's looking at the um at that the uh oh what's it called Storm, Storm. Uh, stormbreaker stormbreaker yeah. i love the, the the way you put your lightning at, and the one thing that bugs me when i see like um sort of like energy type of effects such as like lightning energy balls fires things like that some people forget to put an afterglow around the the, the energy of of type and then onto the person you have done that you've actually added that glow onto the onto the lightning as well as onto the object that it shines on lightning in this instance it's not going to be a bright 
glow on on the person but it, it, it's just enough for me to go yes done right this is done perfectly some people just put a glow around the energy and not think about oh this should be actually reflecting onto the person uh, uh, you know a little bit further out and things like that it's like when you do lightsaber effects that light beam is not just a beam of light onto the lightsaber it reflects onto the person you know at a the very... environment as well exactly things like that and people oh just so that i will i was going to comment on the bifrog it just looks uh, that's the only criticism i can think of it's this looking is, at so this is why i put the plain ones in as well because and this mm. is why i struggle with it when i put the bifrost flat to how the floor actually is in the picture yeah because the floor is so flat it looks like i've done it incorrectly so mm. weirdly, it looks better the way I've done it now than if I did it how it should actually be because yeah. it looks squashed. Oh, well, no, it's so not that. It's kind of like a necessary sacrifice I made, which is I think why like, it feels a little bit off. Yeah. Oh, no, the, what I was going to say is like when you look at the floor, you mm-hmm. can see there's patches of light on the ground and it feels like the f- uh, the orange flames on the uh, Bifrost. I, I don't know what to call it, the ember probably on it. Yeah. It should ma- I would have said in my brain it matches where the light's hitting. If that makes sense, so that the dark parts of the floor, I can imagine the embers are not that strong, that that lit up. Yeah, uh, and, and that's the only thing I would say. But I mean, I'm only basing it on the left hand side of that. Uh, I fully agree. Thing. That was more of like a lightning thought than a yeah, yeah. But, but no, fully agree with that. But the picture itself, I love the pose on that. Just I love the different heighting. Um, I don't know if, which hand the uh, the actors hold it in the film. I, I think again, the only critics I would say is maybe. Uh, have a mirrored effect like one person on the left the other person has it on the right if that makes sense but i mean these are like real small criticism mm-hmm. honestly i just it, I, I knew when i saw this on your feed i went ah oh, you bitch <laughs> oh, I can't that's kind of what i was hoping for i was like i hope people hate me for this <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ oh, i'm dear. gonna stop talking i'm gonna let chapman chat so you 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 right. you, you jump in yeah, so I am so jealous right now of the skill of this photo. It's absolutely amazing. I love every bit of it. Especially, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> especially kind of like, I love how the way it's set up, there's a nice shape to it. It's like, it's constantly leading me to look up and down. So um, this is going to be very weird and technical how I say it, but from my learning of art in video games, people scan images and when they see a certain line, a psychological line, they tend to follow it. And the way you set up this image, there's a nice triangle that constantly leads you to look oh, from the top to the bottom mm. left corner to the bottom right and then back. It's like a constant triangle of you just scanning it and every time you scan it, you see something more, so likely more detail that you find that's really perfect. Kind of like the little sparks of lightning that's on the chest plates, on the kneecap. The, these are amazing. And like the little embers and dust that you mentioned, they're really beautiful. There's like very small details, but that's what makes it so good and realistic. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I really love it. I think like for me, the only way i would change it and this is my own style to be oh, honest please, yeah is i like a little bit more movement when there's capes mm-hmm. so i might have actually asked sorry i don't know the cosplayers themselves yeah but whoever four was maybe her would have held on to the cape and then let go on the counter and then pose that way and there's a little bit more movement on the cape so that's a really interesting one so i did have a movement one and this is what this is what I love that you mentioned the triangle. So I studied um, classical history at school, and we did a lot of statue posing, which is why I've got Scott to do the like opposite shoulder to hip thing. Yeah. When the cape was moving, it blocked too much of Scott, who's Thor in the background. Um, so it kind of made it look really awkward, like he shouldn't be there. So it was a, we had to. I had to kind of make the choice between like, do I have it as a slightly less dynamic? pose which is why i added the bifrost in the end because i thought there wasn't enough movement going on to warrant like the strength or like you have the fabric i'll try and find a rule one for you later but like to show you what i mean but um just i just i like you notice the details i think i'm eddie knows this my biggest pet peeve for myself and other people is if you're gonna put in sfx just try and think of it as if it's really there so like Eddie said with the lightning, if there's light in a picture, it has to reflect off other people and create shadow where it would if it was there in real life. So the challenge with the lightning was like, 
lightning has to go from the most metallic point to the nearest most metallic point. But also I had to factor in where the light already was in the picture just to like get it on the right side of stuff. So the fact that it, all I want you to do is look at it and not think about the fact that I've edited it in, which again is where the Bifrost probably lets it down a tad because it makes it edited. But I think the lightning holds its own and like the, you wouldn't necessarily look at that and go, oh, an edit. You'd be like, oh, that's a cool picture. And I think that's where I'm like really proud of it. Seriously, I, I'm just trying to like pick holes in it and I really can't do that. I mean, I mean, do you mind ask this? No, not ask it. Uh, do you mind saying how long it took you to edit this this one photo? I think bizarrely, it didn't take that long because mm. when um when I saw the two of them, I kind of knew exactly what I knew. I wanted to try putting lightning in, so I mm. made sure that the light was. I had them far enough away from the background that the background was going to be dark, so I didn't have to worry about that. And it was more of a case of how can I accurately do the lightning? And I said to them at the time, if I cannot draw lightning in so it looks like lightning, I will not be doing lightning edits on your pictures. Mm. So it probably took, I'd say, four hours total, including making the brush, working out the right like, combination of layers. So about half an hour of that was Bifrost, I'd say an hour of that, was or two hours was like layering up lightning and then the rest of the time was just doing like all the dodge and burn which is like layers of dodge and burn to build it up to it's like super realistic and then like some color tweaks at the end also one other thing i just want to ask why did you pick this location to take your photo because i'm fascinated by this so i shoot natural light most of the time and the slight difficulty with um this con was that i was in um like a, a, a dress for 10 meters of fabric. So I was quite limited in what I could do. So like this whole shoot, I've kind of got my dress like round my shoulders. <laughs> um, so when you go down to this section of the car park, which someone shot me in before, the background's very dark because there's no lights there. Yeah. But if you have, there's a distinct line where the bridge starts. And if you have a cosplayer stand on that line, then there's still enough overhang in front of you that the the entrance to it, regardless of what the weather is like, acts like a massive soft box. Yeah, so yeah. if you want it darker on them, you just move them backwards. If you if it it's too sunny, there's never any shadows on their face. It's completely smooth lighting. And that's how my style of shooting works best is like smooth, natural, kind of cloudy lighting. So this yeah. for me gives if I know I'm putting effects in and if they're glowing effects, you need a dark background this is the location that I know I can get the shot where I know I can edit them in, mm. which I can't do in the trees, et cetera, because it's too bright in the day. Fair enough. No, it's, like I said, it's I mean... Consistency. I'm sure like you guys have places where you're like, if I know I have to do something, then you've mm. got somewhere you can rely on. Yeah, I was going to say, the reason I ask why you took it to the carpet, because I think naturally, if I was going to take this photo, I was like, oh, take it to the tree line in MCM XL. That's what I would like, because I've done this type of shot once, before and it took ages for me to edit the layers in the dust the uh, i don't know if i did a bifrost but I did all the lightning and the glow effect of that mm -hmm. and i just remember taking me ages and ages and that's why i try to avoid sf sfx type of photos now um i mean if you want to put sfx in have a dark background that is like that will literally make your life easier because it's so hard to make something look like it's glowing yeah the background is lighter because like what do you do like light stuff does not look light in light if you want it to look light you need dark mm. Oh, okay then. So it basically right. actually just made my life like 200 times easier and there's no people there. So. Oh god, yeah, because that's always the fight where we do is that uh, to do these type of shoots uh, is to you know find places where there's not that many people. I mean, I I've done photos where there's uh, people in the background which I don't care about times, but there's sometimes it really does matter. So yeah, I, I totally understand. I think we could probably talk about this a lot, lot longer, but I want to get at least Chapman in and then hopefully I want to see Chapman's. Uh let's well, let's oh. do it then. Let's do it. Let's bring it on Chapman. Um god. Um, no pressure. Yeah, let's. Uh... I mean, do you want to put in your disclaimer right now? Oh yeah, yeah. My disclaimer is: my PC broke. Well, more specifically, my graphics card doesn't work. Like my PC right now could only run Facebook and maybe RuneScape. Nice. And I'm surprised this this podcast is working on my PC. But um, this is my photo. It was from Cos Expo. It's um, it's a character from League of Legends. And that character is called Gwen, the streamstress. So um, what I really love about this is it's a picture of the cosplayer in the uh, standard co 
uh, costume of the character. But if you look on her legs and such, you could see seams because her character is a doll that's been brought to life. So this is something that I really liked. And I had a long time contemplating if should I edit out the seams or not? And then kind of editing, editing out the people and kind of like giving it a nice natural area to, to look in where it looks like it's an environment that seems like it would be from the world where the character would be from. But also kind of like it was a doll that's been brought to life. I needed to add some kind of like a fun kind of like it's not completely human. I don't know how else what I'd explain this. To be honest. I love this photo. Thank you. I actually love it. Can I talk, Eddie? You go. Go for it. So the there's cherry blossom in the background, but it's it's a really lovely way of framing it because instead of it just being blanket cherry blossom, the tr the uh, like branches of the trees actually arc around her head in the exact opposite way of how her skirt's arcing. So you can't not look directly at her face, which is just be like a beautiful way of doing like the framing. It's a slight Dutch angle, which I think adds to the like, her legs are not straight, but her dress is. So it adds to the like, the minute you said doll, I was like, oh my God, I get it. And you've made her look incredibly tall and powerful and also really fragile at the same time. So there's just something about this photo where I could sit here and honestly stare at it for ages and just get something else every time i look just the the pose and the photography are absolute harmony here really really lovely thank you uh, i'm going to contradict charlotte here mm -hmm. i don't know if i like the dutch angle i really don't like i i feel this photo would be so much better if it was upright now i'm not saying you can't do an angle shot so basically the reason i'm saying this because i remember uh, uh i was talking to someone about photography and I used to do like angled shots and so uh, they were slanted to one side. But they said to me, I said, don't do that, Ed, because it looks like they're falling. Now, I'm not suggesting this person looks like they're falling. It's completely the opposite. But if they're in a standing pose like that, I would rotate them upright straight. And that's the only thing I would change about this photo. Everything else that you said about the way... The, the pose, the look, the fragile. The, I lo you know me about colours. I love colours. The, the hair on her, the colour of her hair is like, mwah. I love it so striking, which then brings me closer into the into the person and things like that. Again, what Charlotte was saying about the cherry blossom, the way you framed it. And, it, and I didn't even notice the curve until Charlotte was mentioning it. I'm like, oh, yes, can see even more. I know what you mean by the seam on her, the leg. I was... I think it was me. I probably would have etched that out, but I think you've made the better choice by keeping it in. And yeah, I, I love it. And this is, so you're telling me this is, you've not really, you've not done much edit work on this photo. No, no. So the only edits I've actually done in this photo is on her, uh, on the right of the photo. So her left hand was a orange ba uh, wristband. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which I edited out. And then on uh, on the front of her dress, I, I kind of like removed some creases, mm -hmm. not a lot. So I tried to make it as realistic as a doll as possible, but I kind of also made it look more pristine because the whole back law is she's a toy, which is loved, but also a very elegant toy. So I want to give it kind of like a nice clean kind of like something that uh, uh, that's an iron shirt or iron dress, but it's been played with a little bit. Mm. I really see that. Yeah. I'll tell you something. another thing I like about this photo. It's got a very small hint, and I'm sure it's not, but it's got that small hint of a sepia filter look to it. I love the orange glow. It's such a warm, such a sunny feel to this photo. It does feel like such a real nice day that you took this photo. Uh, and I'm sure you probably changed the color uh, the color temperature of the photo just to get this look. And I love how it's not a, it's not bluey cold, but very yellow, warm, maybe a little pinkish um feel to this photo i think it's interesting as well because it's clearly shot in direct sunlight which is somewhere i really really struggle to even just expose correctly but you've got all it's so flattering for her and like as a female cosplayer this i slightly disagree with eddie on the angle thing because you've made her legs look long you've made her torso look long you've made her look incredibly elegant and I think the way she's leaning back on her leg, which is the lower side of the picture, but the dress is still straight and the tree's tilted, it's adding to the slightly like 
surreal doll-like element but the the weight of the gravity as I'm looking at it sits really nicely slightly to the left and she's looking up off to the right so it's making sense in my head it's kind of making me lean to the left with it in like a very centered way so she feels really stable but it's still so elegant and like as a female cosplayer poses like that are incredibly difficult to pull off without looking kind of like airy fairy and you've managed to not make it really fairy you've managed to make it very deliberate which especially in light like that is incredibly difficult to do <laughs> please work with me <laughs> oh would love to uh, thank you um so i actually yeah i shot in direct sunlight um what i did was i had a off flash that mm-hmm. uh, kind of filled in the, the her face a bit so it kind of like uh, it wasn't as harsh on her and also kind of the whole reason why it was angled is like you said it makes it look much more flattering and a little thing that uh, I've had a few people pick up on is I have this very bad habit of if it's a very elegant or cutesy cosplay I tend to ask them to tilt their head a bit to give them that kind of mysterious but I'm also pondering or I'm thinking kind of elegant look to it and if I have it on straight the photo tends to make her look much more kind of uh, klutzy or a little bit confused rather than elegant which is kind of why I've gone for this angled look it's very powerful I like it a lot I know, I'm happy to be wrong about the angle I I, I I just know that's something I do in my own work is like I try to straighten up the photo as much as I can and I, mm-hmm. I just, it's just a habit I do now but no I mean I, like I said I'm happy to be wrong these like like I said these are all like personal opinions about a photo so it's not like anyone's really right or any and I've always said photography does have certain rules like the rules of third um, lines of perspective and things like that but it's not like rules you have to stick by these are rules you could break if you want so you don't have to, you know, follow every rule. And like I said, like some people will love this Dutch angle look. And I was going to say some, let's just say Eddie doesn't like this photo being <laughs> Dutch angle, but that's, I mean, I'm not saying I'd, you know, I, I wouldn't go oh, dislike. I still love this photo much. Like I said, the colors in it for me is so vibrant. I love it. Again, the pink, blue, purple really suit each other so, so well. And like I said, that warm background. Yeah. Mm, love it love it love it love it actually uh i found the original i will send you that original as well so you can mm-hmm. see the difference Ooh. and so and your your listeners could also see the difference oh okay the okay. changes i did because um so a fun thing about me is i am a person that will fix things in real life rather than in post mm. if i see like a cigarette butt on the floor i will go and pick it up and throw it away then take the photo um and some usually i've had cosplayers that's gone to me he's like you're taking a very long time but i need to clean up the area because i i like to have it in real life where it's nice and neat like this rather than fix it in post i'll tell you something for someone who's got very limited access to to fo- you know photo it's so nice to be fair i will also say the photo as is the raw looks still good and i can't and i can't tell which i prefer actually I love, I think in the original, for me, the blue hair sticks out a bit too much and the colour edit you've done on it, the blue suddenly makes so much like sense. Hmm. I really like that. But also, incredible job on the wrist band. Like, I wouldn't, I couldn't actually tell which wrist you were talking about that you took it off. So seeing the first one, I'm like, that's a thick wristband to remove from a picture like that. Congrats to you on that. I think all con photographers know how irritating it is. So that's oh, really well done. Thank you. I hate to admit it, but I spent about three hours removing it. Because honestly <laughs> this is the best way oh wow so you spent three at least minimum three hours on this photo so. yeah because oh, um, so no, i didn't just use the clone tool uh, or healing brush i actually used paint i used the paint brush and i painted the skin colors and kind of mix and match to get it much more realistic and ah. kind of natural because clone tools are very nice and quick way to do it but i find it if there's like a uh, texture on it it copies the same texture mm. and sometimes when you look into it closer it, it feels odd so kind of that's why i like to paint on the texture a bit i like mm. to paint the colors i like to paint on some imperfections oh well that's cool honestly it's just fascinating to hear how you do because i when i see wristbands like that i, I tend to use clone tools and uh, patch tools to to like you say at least give it that mixture of texture rather than look like oh you can easily see that that part was that part to clone it cross you know i use the patch to at least give it a bit more variety in um in texture as you would say so yeah um 
shall we go around and go around again and uh, I'll share a picture into the ch- chat or do you still want to talk about Chapman's photo a bit more? I'm happy. You're happy, Chapman? I'm happy. Oh god, okay then. I just wanted to quickly say before we move on that because obviously we've done the disclaimer, but it's weirdly just as valuable hearing what people do like about pictures because we're so used to getting constructive criticism mm. but actually when people say they like a picture they very rarely tell you what they actually like about it so i'm finding this probably more valuable than some of the other chats i've had with people because i've never noticed some of the stuff i've done to where you guys have said it and like hopefully you're getting the same oh trust mm, me yes to to get feedback is so hard people just i love it it's like, what what but why tell me for why? the love of god tell me <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm the same so i get a lot of people saying oh that's an awesome picture but i kind of also want to know what makes it awesome for them so that i could kind of do that for more photos and just keep improving yeah absolutely so i've already put the next photo into the chat for for, for us three to look at i hate uh, it pardon i hate it sorry we've just all been too nice to each other i absolutely <laughs> love it <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 Charlotte. Why don't you like no. this photo? No, I can't. I, no, it's too good. I actually, let me, let, okay, so let me describe it. So, <laughs> anyone who knows me or see my work will not be surprised that I at least put one latex photo in there. And if it's going to be a latex photo, it's most most probably going to be purple muffins. But I'm going to break that uh, that uh, streak. At, oh no, wait, it is purple muffins. Oh shit. Um, so this is a location shoot I did with her last year as Psylocke. So. I remember chatting to her like when a restriction was being lifted. We said, "Look, can I get some get some shoot times with you? I need to do something." She said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's not a problem. What do you want to shoot? I said, "Do you know what I love to shoot? It's one of your Psylocks. And She said, oh, "I've kind of like destroyed those, but do you know what, Ed? I'll make you a new Psylock just for you." Went, what the fuck? So I'm like, "Oh God, I've got to have pressure. There's pressure now on me to make these photos good." And oh my God, I didn't realize how she's going to make the suit. So I'm not going to talk about the photo first. I'm talking about her outfit. Her outfit is literally one piece bodysuit. So this is a solid which has um, the bands on the arms, um, the gauntlets on the forearm, the bands on the legs, as well as stockings up to her knees. But if you really look closely, she's just she's connected all of that with transparent latex. So that's it's one piece bodysuit and I a cat suit even, and it absolutely love it so much. The one thing I love about Purple Muffin's work, she makes her own uh, outfit, is the detailing she puts into it. I love her, the ab area. She's like put this contatina lines. Uh, it looks like a star shape, but I, I, I don't know. It's, but, kind of, it's like a fox shaped pentagram thing. Yeah, so it's on her stomach, and I just love it. Oh, just like. So, where we shot this photo uh, was on. So, the picture is her posing one leg up a little bit, you know, twisted hip. And she's leaning against this um, this uh, metal structure. And it's very uh, symmetrical. And I made sure I was dead center as much as possible to get that symmetrical look. But the the actual beams itself was actually rusted in places. So I had to go around each pylon uh, and each beam to take off as much rust as possible uh, using the clone saw, patch tools, and things like that. Again, parts of the floor are a bit uh, mucked up. So I had to like get, get rid of all of those things to so look a little bit more less distracting through the eyes and i just do my utter you know my my favorite thing is to literally select a latex suit make it even shinier just to give it a bit more oomph in the colors uh, and things like that now there's this thing that i've just recently found out i i love doing which i feel like it's a fetish of mine now i love changing people's eye colors that's not her natural eye color i've made her eyes blue Ooh. and Again, I just love doing that. I don't know why I love doing that. I just love doing that. I think it's because of the technique I saw for one thing. I went, I'm going to steal that idea and see if I can do it with this. And I went, oh my God, this works so well. So steal the idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, another thing about her suit. Uh, originally, you could actually see the join lines where the seams are, where uh, it is you know, on the legs, on the arms, uh, and on the suit. I purposely gone into the photo and taken out all the join lines so it looks like it's one uniform piece of katsu and so you see if you look on her left arm you see the peak of the band that's yeah. that would have been a seam line going through that area but i've i've like taken that out 
so that it looks like it's just one uniform arm piece. So you can't see where all the join lines are. So that just looks like it's just one, literally a, a cat suit just being pulled out of latex and it's just ready to go. It's not being cut together or things like that. Um, I love, uh, what else? I think this is what uh, Charlotte's going to hate. I probably have actually tucked her in, but not saying I've made her body line slim or anything like that. It's more that I've made her as curvy as I can without making her looking slimmer than she really is. So like I'm I'm trying to think. I think the armpit area there was a bit of I can't I can't remember. I just know I did something to tuck something in. Maybe a bump. So I just put it in so that it just follows that curved line. Um what else? Um I can't think what anything else I've done. I'm just gonna have to zoom in a bit more. I think maybe the leg I can't remember. Like I'm saying it's just oh it increases in it. That's it in the latex as well. I took as much as those out as possible. So um, if you look in the, um, I'm going to put this de delicately in the hip area where, yeah, there would have been creases where the leg folds in. I took those out so that it's just that little line there that shows there is a, a, a joint in the leg. But other than that, it's it, in the hip area. But other than that, it literally that is what I've done. Again, this took me. A, an hour or so i thought to, to get this the way i want it to look and now you may say an hour's not uh, it, it's too long compared to like charlotte's and and um chapman's like four three hour doing like the bifrost lightning taking out the wristband but for me this photo was just and you know i just love doing this type of photography so yeah i am now ready yeah. for your criticisms it, it's an amazing photo i really love it um I I don't know why, but on her right side, like it just looks slightly disproportional where her kind of like her, her armpit would be. I don't know why. Is it? Be, I think it might be the way. I like, I think it's the her, light on the latex. It could be, yeah. Um, so that's I might have just darkened that a bit personally mm, for me. Okay. And um, for me, also her leg, the one she's standing on. Yeah. The angle, kind of like where her ankle is it looks a little bit weird for me so i might have actually just asked her to lean slightly more to her right so it's, it's a bit more centralized rather than it looks like she's putting all her weight on the ankle i see what yeah, you're saying yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so that's my only kind of like critique apart from that i really love it it's like i i really love the reflectiveness the shininess you could see in the latex you could see the sky basically if you look like in the center yeah, you yeah. see where the, the reflection is the patch of clouds there are i really love how like, the hair looks very neat because a lot of the time i find that when i'm shooting someone who's wearing a wig is the hair frails a lot mm. because of all the movement but this looks very clean it looks very nice it looks like it's at her natural hair that's just been brushed no, I, I I see what you mean. Um, I think because she's leaning on the, on on the frame on the X frame. See what I did there. I, I think she can actually put not so much weight on the ankle, so it doesn't look. I, I know what you mean. On first glance, once if you spot that, it looks like she spent all her weight on the ankle, and it looks very discomforting. But honestly, it's it's. I think because she's got her weight on the uh, her arms. I I didn't even notice the shoulder you were talking about how it looks disproportionate but now i see it i think oh yeah okay then uh if i've known that i can see that i think part of her hair is covering up the other shoulder which makes looks it looks disproportionate in the other but i think yeah i i, I see your point now so yeah it uh, it's fine when you're talking about reflectiveness i'm going to send a video that i've uh, i was as it's showing purple muffins the current mcm photos i did for her um Basically, in this video, I'm not going to share this out, out so you have to imagine this. Um, I took the photo uh, above my head, pointing down. Oh, wow. Um, I, do, I only realized when I zoomed into the photo that you could see my reflection, myself in her latex. <laughs> I, did, I looked at the one you just sent to see if it, you were in that one, but you're not, I don't think. No, no, no. I, I try not to be in I try not to be in any photo, and yet I appear in that, and I go, no, no. <laughs> Um, Charlotte, anything you want to add to this photo? I have so many things I want to add. Oh, God. And I'm going to add the disclaimer that this is not just because I know Eddie very well. This photo is actually making me a bit emotional. Oh, oh, it's God. actually perfect. Like, fuck you, first of all. I might cry. I'm not going to. <laughs> this, is, 
there's nothing I don't like about this photo. It she looks incredible. Mm. Her outfit is perfect. The lighting down her legs, and that's because she's put the see through latex on, is perfect. For as a female cosplayer, I couldn't ask for more. The cross beam she's leaning on, perfect. It's bang in the middle, perfectly equal. And then it's like all of the lines behind it cross sector it where you want them to and where they're flattering her. And it's just, it's, a, you know when you get angry at like perfect stuff? I'm actually getting frustrated because I cannot explain to you like how good this is. Oh. And I immediately put it in my favourites folder, my inspo folder. If I got a shot anywhere close to this, I would probably just drop my camera and be like, I'm done. That's, <laughs> it's, like genuinely, I cannot fault it. it mm. That is the be all and end all of like what I would want from any photo like that. Genuinely. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. Honestly, um, like I said, it took forever to pick a certain amount of photos to to display, but I knew this was one I wanted to share. That this was done on location. This was not done at uh, an yeah. MCM Excel or NEC uh, Mega Con or anything like that. This was done on location and. This is what you can achieve when you do location. So this sounds like a plug for us to be hired for a location. But I'm like genuinely, I'm like, if you don't take me there when I get my MJ suit, then we're not friends anymore. Just right. so you know. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do, but it might be a slight issue. But we'll, we'll talk about it in the red green room, okay? Um, but no, this, th- this photo is genuinely phenomenal. Like the imagine like Doc Ock for people that would need a reference of like all of the kind of arms coming out hmm. from her back. It's like that, but it's like high quality, yeah. fashion level, perfect lighting, mm. so flattering for her. The colours are all beautiful. It's grunge, but clean at the same time. She's perfect. And obviously, I do, personally, I don't edit um, body shape. However, with latex, you want that smooth finish. That's why you wear it. So I've no issue with that it, at it, all. Yeah, and that's why, you know, and, and I know you have slight issues, but I'm, I'm glad you understand why. Oh, and absolutely. Like, and like, but just because I wouldn't do it doesn't mean I disapprove of other people doing it. Like mm. this, this photo is beautiful, and this is why you would do that. And I've shot latex before and edited more than I normally would before, but I'm shit at shooting latex. So you know, because th- this is this is what this is so good, Eddie. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I I won't be surprised. Like the next issue of X Men with Psylocke, and you see this in there. Yeah. Oh really? Oh. Psh. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna cry now no um no, it don't... actually made me tear up when i saw it and i'm not joking at oh, all no. genuinely made, like i get quite emotional with photography i'm a photographer obviously i get quite emotional when i see photos i deem like genuinely very good and i saw this photo I was like that's it like, it's just i will probably get a sharpie at some point and draw on it as like one of my <laughs> like study images but it's so it's just so good but thank you very much thank you very much and i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna stop talking about my own photo and I'm gonna let Charlotte jump in next because yeah I can't take any more than this because I I don't want to follow that genuinely (laughs) (laughs) but I will and you know what I'm sending you a photo with me in it (laughs) (laughs) so there is a reason for this so this whole shoot was good um but this photo specifically is like kind of the main one so similar to the Thor ones so that's sending and then I'm sending a couple of other ones it was like Again, a cu- because in my head, like you, I think Chapman mentioned earlier about storytelling. This shoot, so for people watching, sorry, it's a disappointment after Eddie's. We're all a bit sad now. Um, <laughs> the this is Ron and Ginny, um, and they are very much characters that I love to pieces. And in my head, for the longest time, I wanted to do um, a hog battle of Hogwarts shoot where. It, it's fully shot like it was taken, act- like someone had a camera at the Battle of Hogwarts. So I wanted people in the Forbidden Forest, not just cosplaying, but fully acting with it on location. And um, Kai, he's in this photo with me um, because it was a shoot of him and then of both of us. So kind of like semi semi self portrait, I guess. But it didn't. It doesn't feel like it, which is why I think it counts. Hopefully, please don't kick it out, Eddie. Um, so we went, we got up super early on the morning of my birthday. It was like 6 a.m. We went into the woods opposite my house, which is where they filmed some of Harry Potter, like James Bond, all that kind of thing. And beca- purely because we were lucky with the weather, 
there's this gorgeous mist that was sitting in the background and it was like heavy fog mist. So the depth in the photos looks like the films. The colour grading was easy to get to the films. It's the right type of year. And it's, again, the lighting I prefer, which is completely natural lighting, but it's very smooth and very flattering. So your cosplayers can move around without worrying about anything. And we decided what we wanted to shoot. And we just, like, genuinely, I put more heart into this shoot than I think I have any other shoot for a long time. And then when it came to the edit, I've put in the Harry Potter spells, which during this shoot, I think I really, like, learned to nail and did the, like, have it reflecting off its environment, et cetera, et cetera. And just, I, I absolutely, this whole set, but specifically the duo one and then the ones of Kai sitting on a log, which don't have magic in, I really just think are like perfect for me because it, it looks like you're there. And now I'm going to shut up. <laughs> uh, I'm just, it's amazing. It actually, for me, it feels like it's actually taken from the movie itself. It's so dramatic. I really like so how you've encompassed movement. So this sounds strange to a lot of people, uh, but in photography, it being a still image, you could put movement in it. Movement is shown in very subtle details and you've captured that really well. Like how the way your body's arched, the hair in the how it's flowing, it shows that you are moving, you are responding to, to uh, an action. How your friend has kind of like the run has leaned in the emotion it's just really good storytelling it's like it you, kind of for me it shows that oh you are fighting for your life right now you're you're lost and you're fighting you're struggling but it's an amazing image i really love like how the background builds to it it to me feels like it's a painting it's a uh, uh kind of like in in medieval fantasy painting you'd see in an art exhibition because it's just so so oh, stunning that. that's like the highest compliment i've just sent the before image as well so you can see that all of that fog really was there so that we massively like the fog it, without that fog it wouldn't have been as good but yeah it, it's amazing especially kind of i love the little details you've done so on the kind of like the top right you could see little splats kind of like it looks like the mud or kind of something that's reflected and hitting the lens of a camera it looks really good kind of like the different leaves and the trees there it kind of shows that it has been untouched so you're escaping to somewhere that's magical that hasn't been touched or been explored kind of like a lot of problems i see when i take photos out in the field a lot of the trees the grass seems disturbed so it doesn't give that essence of like it's a mysterious place where it's uh, unused whereas this it does and it's a really amazing thing thank you <laughs> i like i think just before i do so something the biggest thing with um, NES effects pictures is if your cosplayers do not commit to the movement, you will not get a good picture. And I stand by that. Um, so for this picture, I said to, to, to Ron, I was like, I'm going to push you because if my hair's not moving and I don't look like ugly pretty for this picture, this picture's not going to work. Because if we haven't fully committed to the fact I'm shoving you out of the way of something... It's just going to look like two idiots standing in a forest playing with, you know, fake wands. So working with people like Ron who really understand that I'm just going to shove him, but we know that the picture's going to look good at the end. And if you look at the single shots of him when he's, there's one of him sitting on a log, one of him running for his life, like he really understands that. Like the commitment to not looking good, you just have to look like you're doing the action. And then you'll get the picture. And I think that's what sells it. But girls with long hair, if your hair's not moving and you're trying to do an action picture, you've got to get someone to flick it for you. Do you know how much I hate this photo? So much. <laughs> I am so jealous about this photo. I was going to ask you multiple questions like, are those trees really there? It's like just one or two. Like the nearest ones to you, they're real, but the ones in the background, they're clearly faked. But you show me the, the, the original and oh fuck, no, they are. That's all real. The mist is out. Like Chapman said, and, he, and, I'm, and I'm pissed off he's taking my line. This does look like it came straight out of the film. I really thought if you put Harry Potter, that you know that type of font type tile on that picture, I would have thought that's a genuine movie poster. I genuinely think this could have been, should have been a movie poster. I, it should have been. They're the best characters. <laughs> I, I, I don't watch Harry Potter and I don't care about it. Not because of J.K. Rowling. I generally mm. don't care about Harry Potter. I mm -hmm. honestly 
generally thought this was a movie poster. I ge- that's how good this photo is. Like you said, like Chapman said, the, the action, the movement in this photo, even if it's a still picture, it looks like you you know like instantly what's going on. It's it's and, and uh, much as I said earlier about how much I hate negative space. This use of negative space works so so well, and it's unbelievable. I don't know how you've made it so dark but so lit at the same time i love that you've given it such a green hue to it uh it really works it gives that such a claustrophobic feel to it the trees around it again adds to that claustrophobia to it i think that's what the first thing i noticed was how how encompassing everything was and yet you felt so there was like no escape from what you're doing just i can feel that danger in this photo so so much and i'm so pissed off how much <laughs> i love this photo and i hate you for this and <laughs> i i honestly i know how much you do like your your harry potter photos and this really i, I know i keep swearing and i and i I'm, I'm trying to tone down my swearing but i can't because i really fucking hate how good this photo <laughs> is um honestly, I think I just, you know when as a creative you know what you want to do yeah and in that moment you know you've done it mm. i think when we and there's a hilarious behind the scenes video that i'll find for you boys later <laughs> where it's just both of us standing there repeatedly shoving each other out of the way so we look like complete idiots like i it's probably one of the funnier videos of me in my life mm. and then like to see this come out of that is mad but we but you know when you know your job yeah. and then also, like, I'd recommend, like, don't be scared of ruining a picture because the original one is quite flat and grey and then I had to make it way more green than you think it should be to match the Harry Potter vibes because Harry Potter is a very green show. Mm. Um, a too green. If you took this as just a picture, it's too green. But because <laughs> it's Harry Potter, it's allowed. And, like, with adding the spells in, the spells are really messy in Harry Potter. They never go straight. So that was really tricky to add those in and not feel like, ugh. Mm. But, um... Yeah, I just think being messy and being fine with it and then the the bit that sells it is painting where the light would have fallen on the characters at the end yeah. and adding in the shadows and then suddenly it all comes together and you're like, yeah, but I'm I'm really proud of this shoot. Oh God, I've just zoomed on your face and I can see that that light reflection off your wand energy onto your face. I it's, also put it in my eye, but you can't see. In this no, place. but it's just enough for me to not to hate you even more because you, you do what I want people to do and ah. Uh, I hate you. One thing I want to did you did you did you say you took this photo or did did someone else uh, press the shutter button? No, no, I took it. Fuck <laughs> so, it. So I put on Nikon cameras. I don't know about Canon. There's something called interval time machine settings. Mm. So I got Kai to stand there. I put the camera up. Put the focus point where I knew I would be standing because my face in the middle. Yeah. Um, it's on. I think it's on like a, a two point eight or maybe a four depth of field. So it was a narrow depth of field we were working with. Yeah. Um, and basically it takes two photos every two seconds. So it will go click, 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 click. And then because I'm so used to it and obviously Kai trusts me, um, I was just like, it takes a while with movement photos, but we just got it. And I'm, I'm really proud of the fact I did it for myself because this was right at the end of lockdown, just as people were allowed to see each other again. So it was the first shoot after lockdown and it was like all of my creative energy of stuff I wanted to do just in one photo and like the first like proper shoot and I'm just I'm so pleased with it. Fuck I still fucking hate you. I fucking, fucking hate you. you. I hate both of you, let's be honest. We all need to work <laughs> together. We all hate each other, but in, <laughs> in a loving way. In Welcome to creative energy. <laughs> This is why at Comic Con you see me and Eddie shouting abuse at each other. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, no, it's not just to you, Chapman. I, I throw beast to everyone, so it's, don't feel you're, don't feel like you're that special, Chapman. I mean, I think Tom physically carried you away at one point, Eddie, which was quite good. So, <laughs> so there's something with photographers, and this is why I love working with other people. If when you guys see the shot, you're going to be shocked at how differently we all shoot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, and, and stuff like Chapman's shot in the direct sunlight is something I really, really struggle with. But this is why you kind of you pick your photographers and you pick your cosplay for a photographer and this is why as photographers we love talking to each other because i can't do what chapman's done i want to be able to do it and this is the best way of learning just like hearing what they have to say for themselves like i would never have known there was a light in that picture and that is astoundingly impressive so just same for me i i can't do any sf uh, i can't even english now i can't do <laughs> 
I, I can't do special effects in all honesty. For me, special effects is something I really struggled with. So I like to do mine naturally. Mm -hmm. So this is why I spend a lot of time actually in the environment. If I'm doing a dedicated shot, I will remove stuff from the environment itself physically and then take the shot again. And I mean, I've had times where I've actually, actually I'll, in the next photo I'm about to show you guys, <gasps> yes. um, I it took up, I think 50 tries to get that pose done. And there was one photo as well that uh, I haven't, I'm not going to show you, but it's taken me 186 tries to get the right shot. What? <laughs> what was yes. the photo? What was it of? You will see in a moment. Okay, I'm excited now. Well, shall we, shall we do it? Shall we yes, yes, let's yes, do yes. it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm bored myself. Carry on. <laughs> so, this is the one that took 50 shots. To get perfect for me. <gasps> Fuck me. Sorry. Bend over. <laughs> We've known each other um, too long. <laughs> so this is not edited. This is straight off the camera. Are you joking? Oh, you bastard. No, this is straight off the camera. You bastard. You bastard. Oh. This is straight off the camera using a 1.8 lens uh, with a, a flash uh, to fill in the face a bit. But this was taken on location at an arcade. So for people who know Sailor Moon, um, one of the backstories is Sailor Moon's hideout is in an arcade. So I came upon a chance where I have rights and permission to shoot in an arcade. So I took that chance and took a Sailor Moon cosplayer to do a shoot of Sailor Moon in an arcade in her natural hideout. This was taken on the Sunday night of MCM. So uh, I believe Eddie remembers asking me what one plans were on Sunday was. I've got a photo shoot after this in the arcade, like two hours away. This was that photo. You're still a bastard. I hate you so I know. much. Um, are you still describing? You and, and, can, can um, I cut in or do you... Go, go for it, go for it. I don't think I could really describe it. Like, people will see it. Will, yeah, will see it. so basically she's like... like those who haven't had a chance to look at this photo, if you're not gone to the to the website, if you have, just to remind people, it's foodandcosway.org slash podcast 109. This photo is everything I like about my own photography. As in, you get that photo in camera as much as you can. You want to do as little effort afterwards post as as much as possible and jesus everything is just right the amount of boker in the background and in the foreground as well you you look at her straight away the most important thing about photography is that you focus on the eyes you want to have that focus the, the sharpest point in the photo to be the eyes nowhere else because that's where your brain naturally goes to you naturally go to her eyes you naturally see everything about her you ignore everything you know she's at the at the arcades but you totally ignore it at the same time because you're focusing on her so much the color palette of it's, it's just practically yellow and pink and it all matches so so well mm, can at you so much if i'm gonna i'm gonna try to pick something apart in a minute but um oh god i hate you so much um did you, did you do no color correction on this at all no no this is natural how? Um, so <laughs> genuinely, just before I critique it, in which I won't because it's great. But how have you got all the colours so like analogous? Or was it like that in the place or? So the the place itself, if you look at the background, is a very orangey red background location. Okay. What I did was I got a flash and I set it to one twenty eight and I put a blue gel on it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So if you look around like her cheeks on and her nose, you can see a slight tint of blue. Mm -hmm. That's from the blue gel. Yeah. That's how I kind of counteracted the colours. Because this is what I was gonna say. When you were like straight out of camera, I was like, how? Because firstly, one of well, the things I want to do most and I find probably the hardest bit of photography that I think everyone should be able to do is ma managing to put off camera flash in a picture where you can't tell it's there which is exactly what you've done here. I never in a, a million years would have said there was a flash in this picture, but everything's very peach toned around her. All the lights are red or purple or yellow, but her skin tone is spot on. Like it's human skin. It's mm. not tinted by the environment, which is 
something that a lot of people I've seen struggle to keep true in edits. So the fact that you've managed to do this in straight out of camera is just so like your understanding of color theory is off the scale. She's looking straight at the camera. There's negative space below, which I like because it's giving me more color. Her, it, just, she, the, you can't look away from her, and the her elbows like vanishing towards the camera in uh, bokeh. There's bokeh behind her, and just all of it really draws you straight in. It's it's a perfect picture, honestly. I have also added this one to the inspo folder. For God's <laughs> Thank sake. you. Like, it's just. And her eyes are so blue. And now you've said about the blue gel, I see like what it's doing. But it's a really, really, really clever colour choice to go for blue against all the, the yellow of her wig, the white as well, and the red. You've really managed to balance that perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, so also kind of I chose an 85 mil, millimeter lens for this. because. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was actually, I had a... 20 on me on the day and an 85 um i actually i've for a long time i was wondering if i should have used the 20 or 85 so for people people who don't know uh these lenses kind of distorts the images sometimes so uh at one point i thought this should be done on a 20 so i could get more of the background but instead i chose for an 85 which was much more zoom because in a portrait it kept it much more flat and much more natural mm-hmm. uh, without this much distortion on the face but with a 20 i kind of like your nose would be distorted a bit so kind of this is why it's such a tight crop, in a sense. Yeah. I'm impressed you got... An, because also, I imagine the arcade's very dark. So even with a light, especially with a blue gel, I'm impressed... Because I shoot 85 as standard now, because it's my like best quality lens. But I'm impressed that you got far back enough to get that much depth in, because you need a lot of space with an 85mm to get even that much of a cosplayer in especially when you're balancing a light and what I assume was quite a dark room. I don't know if that was an issue at the time. Yeah, it actually, it was quite dark. Um, so kind of, I set it to a slower shutter speed and I yelled at people to get out of my photo. Yeah, <laughs> love that. I, I, I genuinely, I at one point where the cosplayer was like getting ready, this, this little kid started around, I was like, Oi, kid, get out. I need to take this photo. Amazing. <laughs> And I think, like, I made the kid cry. I don't know, because the kid did run to his mummy. And I apologize for that. I'm normally not that mean, unless you're a photographer, and I really like your work. But, <laughs> yeah, I think I made the kid cry, just to get this photo. <laughs> Some photos are worth it. Not many, but this is one of them. Uh, I mean, when they said that what, you know, works is, like, you, you, you bleed tears for it, that's probably not the tears you're looking for. You know? Um... I'll tell you something about that negative space that Charlotte mentioned. I, I actually zoomed in and see if it looked good as a, as a square um, crop. Mm-hmm. I think you should give it a try, Chapman, and see if that would work for you. I think that might work. Well, I think the only reason I would say that because that there's a, I th- I'm assuming it's a bar underneath. Yeah, I see what you mean. Which slightly puts me off, but I mean, it's still a lovely photo. But I mean, if you just cropped it in into that square, the Instagram square one by one. Or that for me that would even look even sweeter. And I would call you a bigger bastard than ever. So, so I actually I've tested it as a square crop. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, square crop looks really nice, but this is actually a claw machine. Yeah. This is an uh, actual claw oh, machine. So I see what you're saying. I wanted to keep telling the story of an arcade. So rather than she's just leaning on any table, it's actually a claw oh. machine. Oh, so I was trying so to it, I was trying to work out what it was, and I think because I didn't get that reference. That's why. Yeah, yeah, it's a little complicated. I actually it... agree because I thought it was just the top of something, and then I noticed that below, and I went, "Oh, it's a claw machine." So for me, I would keep that because I needed that to like know the context of the room because mm. you can kind of see from the background, but then it could also be like a stand at con. Whereas with that bit below, I'm like, "Oh, it's definitely like the arcade vibe." Jeez. Yeah, honestly, it's it's a for a photo, and I, I know we keep talking about how. Uh, we all put this much effort into this photo and that photo fo- and this photo. Seriously, this photo does not need much more work to it, and that's the, just a testament to a photographer. Um, like sometimes when you, like Charlotte would say, you need to pick the right photographer because you may spend, you know, uh, like X amount of time with a photographer, and they might get that photo done in like ten shots. Chapman said he did this; he took a hundred shots just to get this shot. 
you know, it's the experience that that photographer knows that they can get these type of photos. And like, you know, you know, you know, you you carry that experience from one photo shoot to another to another to another. It, it always filters through type of thing. So yeah, I, I'm still calling you a bastard. I I just ah. I, I second mean, that. Uh, honestly, I hate everyone. I ah. Uh, uh, I think a lot of people would have looked at that photo and gone, "This is incredible, the best photo ever." I'm going to see what I can do with it in Photoshop. And the fact that you've had the restraint to leave it, I think, is a credit to you because even I would have been like, "Maybe I'll lighten this bit of hair." Maybe, and actually, I think I would have ruined it in the process of just feeling like I had to edit it. But yeah. it's perfect as it is. It doesn't. It really doesn't need it. No, it really doesn't. Honestly, it's just. Yeah, you're, you're you're still a bastard. I want to call you the C word. I want to call you Charlie. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Uh... <laughs> Whoa. I'll, I'll take those as compliments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I I can't stop looking at it. all. I know, and I, I, I forget my photo. These four photos I've seen today are just so good, and I'm glad I've you know I got to do this type of podcast with you guys. Uh, I, I love it, and you know, just what I love is that we all pulled out the stops on the second one. Clearly, the first one we went, "Let's test the waters," and the second one we all went, "Right, hands down, here you go." So, I see. Look, I just, I still don't know. Am I, um, I'm not going to show you to to, um, to 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 everyone else, but these are the other ones. Oh no, it's three photos. Okay. Oh yeah, should we send our other ones to the group? Chat? Yeah, we, we won't really discuss it too no. much. No, no, I'll, we'll I'll, I'll, I'll send my three now because right here we go. So. Um, Mine are at the lake, ha, and they're really good, ha. <laughs> so here's mine. So so we've got one of Hannah in Wonderland as uh, Black Canary, and basically the the main point of this photo I like is that this was done at MCM, done where the canopy tunnel is, uh, mm -hmm. and the wind caught her hair so well that it it looks like a, like an action shot and things like that. Um, the next photo I sent was basically, oh god, is it Nehru? cosplay or Nehru anyway um she basically she's Doctor Strange and but I've got the uh, special effects of the oh god hand I don't know, thing. the hand thing yeah exactly yeah. so oh the shield that's it the shield type of thing and I, again it's the, that glow effect and I, and I just love that type of, type of thing and again I'm not good at SFX so that's what it is and the third one basically golden hour I caught yeah. this just at the right moment of this character of Jinx uh, this is a like, petite spider. She was jinxed from uh, Arcana, and we're walking around, going to the bridge uh, that that uh, bridge that connects the the two XLs uh, halves. And we, when we got to the top of the stage, I went, "Oh my god, we just caught gold now!" And it was just shining through so nice. I went, "Yes." So those were the other like pictures I was going to pick. So um, I, I, I'm not out of comment. I'm just saying, like, "Oh yeah. god, I've just seen Charlotte's." I've just seen Chapman's. I want Chapman to go next, please. Please right. explain that first one you sent, because uh, fucking hell, mate. Okay. <laughs> which which one's the first one? Because it comes out different. I uh, got the two people in front of flowers, but minimal light. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that's taken in insomnia. That okay. is Genshin. I was very limited to time with them, because they couldn't leave the... Um, the booth they were in and they had to do judging soon so there was this fake sakura tree there so what i did was i took them there and i just made it a very fast shutter speed with a bright flash and then just slight face tweaking uh painted up the makeup a little bit and literally that was it Beautiful. this was all done with a single flash wow uh yeah and then uh basically i i had to touch up the colors on the tattoo a little bit and kind of uh, remove a bit of the reflection off the mask. Mm -hmm. but I kind of kept the main focuses on Ronnie or uh, in this case, Xiao, the cosplay. It's eyes. So because it was a very intense stare, which I thought made it very nice and it did really build into the character. While the other one was uh, our Raiden Shogun. And she has like this sometimes aloof look, but she was like a very kind of powerful person so this gave her a kind of like a powerful but a loft kind of look to it mm. I, I want to pick up on the other arcade photo that you put into the chat yeah. I, again i love oh. this type of like anime melancholy type of look to this photo i just love it so much uh, so this is um no limit cosplay and uh the 
one on the left, he's another photogra- a cosplay photographer as well. Yeah. Uh, Race the Wind Photography, I believe he was. Um, so this is from an anime from Netflix called Bubble. It's a very somber and sad film. So if you guys have a chance, do give it a check. Um, but spoiler alert, um, one car- if they touch each other, the female will dissolve into Bubble. So kind of, they have this building up of romance in the show and it's set in like this distorted and uh, a, a kind of like after an apocalypse Tokyo. So I thought Tokyo is very synonymous with arcades. What if we do the shoot in arcades? And one of the key things is they can't touch each other. If they do touch each other, she dissolves into bubbles. So this is why it kind of like they're showing the romance through touching a toy, kind of like they're holding ah. hands uh, but without holding hands. And then this is all natural light. This is all light from the arcade. So if you refer to the Sailor Moon photo, now you know how dark it was actually. So wow. good. So, so good. And this is off the camera as well. Oh, sorry, Eddie. Go no, that's away. fine. Just I, I, no, I, I, I more actually love the way it's posed rather than yeah. anything else. I love it. It's such a story. Exactly, because I'm shit at telling stories. This, to me, immediately went, ah. Oh. And I love the line in the middle as well, that, that division that you're creating between the two. The more, now that I know more about this character, the, the, this idea, mm, love it. Just, yeah, the, yeah, the on. only thing I hate is if you look on the very left, you see one of the people's heads I've, I shouted at. Really? They're in, oh, they're in the photo. Just, yeah. You just about see it. They're slightly blurred enough that you don't notice it. But if someone points it out, you could see it. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. I, I want to quickly go to Charlotte's one before we end of the podcast because I didn't realise how much yeah. we're really over the, the, the uh, what I would call a normal so length podcast. A, a podcast XL, we're very wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this is all just a, a set of uh, a cosplayer just as Yulena from Black Widow. Yes, this is the love of Lou, who I had never met before the shoot and is immediately after the shoot it's probably my number one cos first work with ever. Um, we were we were by the lake. I didn't move from the lake. I didn't intend to not move. I just had a queue of people. So <laughs> genuinely, I was like, how do I use this to the, my advantage with each character? And I, I w- think I have I, to say very quickly, yeah. I love the crouching one. The crouching one. I was like, what can I do that nobody else along this lake will do? And I'm actually leaning out over the lake. So I'm shooting back at her because Mm -hmm. the light from the lake was coming, bouncing up off the water. So she needed to face it without getting everyone in the background. So I've leant out over the lake with my camera. So as she looks over the lake, all of that bounce light from the waters hit her face. So that was fun. And the other like kind of big one from that shoot is the jumping one where I literally lay on the floor and I was like, I need you to jump and pretend you're shooting me. And just her face and the way the sun's coming around the edge, just perfect. She's perfect. I love mm. her so much. And she's only, I think, 18, Oof. which is mad. That is mad. I'm, I'm only 18, first time I've met her. And immediately she's got that commitment that I need in all my action pictures. So yeah, I yeah. think she got more pictures back than anyone I've ever sent pictures to. Mm. She got about 20, I think. Wow. Because she looked that good in every single frame. I was like, just have them all, genuinely. Oh, wow. That, that is good. And I, I'm fortunate. I'm going to tell in the podcast. I'm so sorry that this little bit of just quick roundup was such a quick roundup. And I wish we could talk more. Um, I hope everyone, including the listeners, enjoyed listening to this. And hopefully they've gone to foodandcosplay.org slash podcast 109 just to see these photos, uh, what we're describing, what we're talking about, and just see how much... I don't want to sound like we're preaching to say how much work we put into these photos, but I just want to talk about, I'm always wondering what people do in their workflow to get to those photos, how, how much work goes into it. But some of it's just, it's like I said, it's previous experience from one from a previous photo that goes into the next photo. And I always think that's fascinating to, to, to do and, and to hear. So anyway, I'm going to stop, uh, stop talking. I'm going to end the podcast. Um, let's do, let's do the social media bits. So Charlotte, where can they find you on the social medias and including Twitter? They can find me on Twitter at CX Woolrich photo. Thank you. Internet Woo! for moving so incredibly quickly. Um, <laughs> I am on TikTok at Charlotte Woolrich or at C Woolrich photography. I am on Instagram as at Charlotte Woolrich underscore cosplay or at Charlotte Woolrich underscore photography. And everywhere else is at Charlotte Woolrich. Woolrich is spelled W-O-O-L-R-Y-C-H. Um, and please hire me. Thank <laughs> you, <Eddie. laughs> um, uh, VHS photography. Sorry. Um, Chapman, where can they find you on the social medias? 
Um, yeah, so my social media is LPC Photography on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, sorry, I don't post t- on TikTok much. And I am LP Cosplay Photography on Facebook. You could normally find me as the loud Asian guy yelling at the League of Legends or Overwatch meets at MCM fantastic um if for some reason you're not following me either you can find me on uh, if you go to foodandcosplay.org slash links that's where you'll find all my social media links uh as keep i keep mentioning about the podcast link so i'll do you the general one which is foodandcosplay.org slash podcast that's where you find all the previous podcasts i've recorded with charlotte and hopefully future po- cos- uh, podcast not cosplay but podcast with, <laughs> with chapman uh if you go to food and, uh, foodandcosplay.org generally you'll find cosplay photo daily photos that i upload that i've taken as well as articles uh what else um, if you go to patreon.com slash food and cosplay you can help donate put uh, some money into this podcast I'm going to make that really short so I'm not going to do my spiel but if you can can you can't don't worry about it so on that note thank you very much for listening to the podcast and thank you to my guests who have been, uh, been discussing their photos as well as discussing other people's photos so um, I would like to do this again with different photographers if we can so but I mean again I hope you've enjoyed it and um, yeah thank you for being on the podcast Charlotte and Chapman Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. And they're going to say goodbye. So, bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.